Alrighty, so since tomorrow I am going to be a little bit busy, I decided that tonight I am going to do not only the review of the 13 games that happened yesterday, which is going to be the longest review that I'm going to be doing this season, but also I have to do the preview in terms of looking at the first six games that is going to be happening in match week number 29. And by the way, match week number 29, uh, MLS seems to be very kind to me by decided to put Almost the exact same amount of games on both Saturday and Sunday, where on Saturday we're going to have six games, and on Sunday we are going to have seven games, and and that, you know, for me, that is a pretty easy way for me to kind of just split the preview into the first part, looking at the Saturday game, and then the second part, basically, looking at the Sunday game. And also, I'm doing the, the preview first, because, you know, with the way that I am about to do the longest review of the season after when I finish this video it's probably going to take a long time to upload that review and you know doing a preview it shouldn't take that long in terms of me looking at these six games and then uploading onto my YouTube channel but with that being said let us actually get in the first game and the first game of course is the game between Austin FC versus RSL, which is the matinee game that's going to be starting at 3.30 p.m. Eastern, 12.30 p.m. Pacific. But the actual kickoff is 2.50 p.m. local time. And let's just hope this time that this game is actually go going to be starting on time on Twitter. Because, you know, what happened last time when the Twitter stream decided that, yeah, they're not going to show the first 10 minutes of the game. And that I don't know why exactly that of the... Of course is the case well i should know why it is i mean it's twitter you 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 know what what the quality of twitter stream is going to be in in terms of mos and unfortunately we got another one with this game by the way i think we have two twitter stream that unfortunately we're going to have to endure in match week number 29 as all uh, we have a rare twitter stream that's going to be happening on on the sunday matchup and one of the seven matchup that's going to be happening on sunday but in terms of this one you know austin they are coming into this game Coming off of a 3 nothing loss against Colorado away. And, you know, I'm not going to go too much detail in terms of each of these teams. Of how they lost their game. Because, you know, in some ways, maybe it's kind of... I don't just want to give give it away in terms of how these teams lost. When I'm about to do the review and talk about how exactly these teams, of course, suffered the resort that they had. And to see how exactly Austin lost 3 nothing in the last game against the Colorado Rapids. While RSL, of course, winning 2-1 against the LA Galaxy at home. There's only one prior meeting between both of these teams, and it was RSL winning one nothing against Austin FC. And you know, with the way way that you know, as we get closer into the playoffs, and it seems like the Western Conference now it looks like there's there's free spot up for grabs. Like I think, I think it is pretty clear that there is there is right now six team that is fight fighting for those fifth, sixth, and seventh spot. And you know, with with half of those team that's going to make the playoffs, and half of them will missed the playoffs you know i'm pretty sure now i'm gonna have talk about with a bunch of these team of how you know if there is one team that is involved in a match or if they're face off again each other head to head you know it's going to be like a big playoff of kind kind of uh or a match that has some 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 playoff implication and this of course is going to be one of them and there's no doubt the other team around there will definitely be rooting for austin in in this game but yeah we shall see whether or not it if Austin can once again be, be a spoiler where, like I said, you know, their season is pretty much done. And let's see if they can maybe return back home after that tough loss that they have on the road and able to, to get a win against RSL in this game. But now moving on in terms of the next match is going to be Montreal versus Atlanta. So Montreal playing their second, I think, of a free game home stretch. And, you know, I talked about before, it's not going to get any easier after Montreal, of course, play, play probably the toughest game that they play at home in the last game against New England. And unsurprisingly, they lost 4-1 in that one to drop their record to 10-7-10 and, and now have found themselves outside of the playoff line. Well, for Atlanta, they bounced back by winning 1-0 against Inter Miami at home to improve their record to 10-9-8 and, and once again find themselves above the red line right now. By the way, you know, with how I talk about the Western Conference playoff race, the Eastern Conference, it seems like there is like five spots that is up for grabs and that between third all the way down to, to 10th place right now in the East, uh, there is a, still a shot for each of these teams to, of course, make it to the... Make it to, to the the playoffs and that i think still between third through eighth 
there's only three points separated in terms of that. So, you know, if, even though if you're a team that is kind of like in, in third place right now in the East, that doesn't mean that you're that comfortable with the way that you have a three-point gap. And that, again, if we as we get closer to the playoffs, the, the more that the, the this playoff race in the East started to kind of continue to jump up, the more that these games, of course, is going to mean a lot. And knowing the fact that both of these teams are involved in terms of being part of that group that is on the bubble of the, the playoff line, this is no doubt going to be a playoff six-pointer. Now, last five head-to-head match, uh, it was Montreal and Atlanta played to a 2-2 draw before Atlanta winning one nothing against Montreal. There was a 1-1 draw between both of these teams and then Atlanta winning 2-1 against Montreal. And then Atlanta, of course, winning on the road against Montreal. In fact, uh, in the all-time meeting between both of these teams, Montreal have only won once against Atlanta. And that was all the way back in the first ever meeting between both of these teams. So Atlanta have definitely got Montreal number. But, you know, knowing the fact that this is a playoff six-pointer, you know both teams is going to be, be up for this game. And and we'll, we'll hope to get a, a crucial three points to get, get themselves either staying above the red line, that is Atlanta United, or Montreal potentially finding themselves getting back above the red line. But now moving on, in terms of the next match, is going to be FC Cincinnati versus the New York Red Bulls. So this is no doubt must-win territory for the New York Red Bulls because they're getting to a point where, yeah, they, they really need to start, start winning some of these these games down the stretch. They want to get some some hope to to potentially get themselves into to this playoff race because after that 1-1 draw against the Union at home, which means more points drop at home, they really need to kind of maybe make up for, for that ground. On the road, and this is probably the 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 road game that they they had a chance to make it up because they're playing against a Cincinnati team that yeah now they basically own the wooden spoon spot and they have basically mentally checked out right now with a four eight and fourteen record. This game will start at seven thirty p.m. Eastern, four thirty p.m. Pacific, but the actual kickoff is seven thirty eight p.m. local time. Uh, last five head to head matchup, it was a nil nil draw between both of these teams, but FC Cincinnati did win one nothing against the Red Bulls. Before they did win against the Red Bulls again by a score of two goals to nothing. But that was, remember, back in the MLS's back tournament. Then the Red Bulls did win 3-2 against FC Cincinnati. Before the Red Bulls did win against 2 nothing against FC Cincinnati. But at least in the last couple of head-to-head -head matchup, FC Cincinnati has, has done well against the Red Bulls. Although, like I said, this is an absolute must-win for the Red Bulls. Like, if they do not win this game, there is no doubt I think their playoff hope is probably going going to to go up in flames because you know again this team just have no margin for error from dropping point points from now to the end of the season with the way that i think that is still a seven point gap that they have to make up but now i think there's like what uh let's see they play 26 games so far for this season and that means they got eight games to make up for for that seven point gap which is a lot to make up for that short amount of period and hope that you can really go, go into a good form and hope that other team around them also so lose so you can get the, yourself back into that playoff race. But now moving on, in terms of the next match, it's going to be Orlando versus DC United. So Orlando finally kind of stopped the bleeding in the last game as they were able to snap their four-game losing streak by winning 2-2, two, 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 or actually not winning, but drawing 2-2 two, two against Nashville. I mean, obviously, Orlando would hope that they were able to end their losing streak with a win, but they did get a 2-2 draw against Nashville, although the bad news is the winless run continued to now be at five games, and Orlando is now that team that is just above the red line in the Eastern Conference, whereas they play against a DC team that after they got a big 3-1 win against Minnesota at home, and their record is now at 12-4-11, and they jump all the way up into third place in the Eastern Conference, but like I said, you know, even though DC is third place in the Eastern Conference, I'm pretty sure they're not that comfortable Yet knowing the fact that it's only three points above the the red line, and you know, you know, right now it just feel feels like whatever happened this this week, there's going to be once again some some change of, change of position that we're going to see in the Eastern Conference. I mean, these last couple of weeks, it's that Eastern Conference has just been kind 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 of like an elevator in terms of the, those those spots between third third through eighth, where teams just kind of shuffle in like at one point they're at third place and then the very next week after they lose or win they they drop down to eighth place or maybe even go 
up a little bit higher. But in terms of the last five head-to-head matchup, uh, it was Orlando winning one nothing on the road against DC before DC did win one nothing against Orlando City. Uh, then DC win two one against Orlando City before DC did win three two against Orlando City, and then it was a one one draw between both of the these team. And you know the good news for Orlando is that they finally are back back home after that that gauntlet of a run that they are in and in some way their schedule is gonna start to get a little bit easier but still when you look at the remaining games there are still some tough opponents and especially teams that is around them in the playoffs that is going to be a huge matchup and a, and a playoff six pointer in their few, in some of these games but right now they just need to try to take care care of business and especially trying to finally end this little mini free fall that they they're going in right now, which, like I said, you know, even though they stopped the ble bleeding by by getting a, a big 2-2 draw and getting a big point against Nashville on the road, they still have that that winless run, and they have not won, won ever since the, the calendar month turned to September. But now, moving on into the next match, it is going to be FC Dallas versus Minnesota. So, Dallas is now winless in, in the last six games, and they have lost three in a row to to pretty much drop the record to 6, 9, and 13. And if you didn't think that FC Dallas season was over a couple of weeks ago, yeah, it is pretty much over. Like, they, they're they definitely not going to be making the playoffs this season. Although, they do now have a chance to, you know, even though they are not going to make the playoffs, they now have a chance to maybe play that spoiler role as they play against a Minnesota team that is literally the last team in in the Western Conference at the playoffs start that right now and i believe they have i think a four point point gap or maybe a three point gap between vancouver in terms of the the red line right now and also minnesota does have a game in hand over the team that is below them so you know the good news is even though the loons are the last team in they are still in a comfortable position where even if they if they maybe lose a game and then teams around them win uh even though there could potentially be a chance that that Minnesota could be tied with Vancouver after the end of the game. At least they still have that that game in hand. Now that being said, I hope it doesn't come to that case. And especially what happened in terms of the midweek game, which I'll talk about later in the review, where it just feels like Adrian he basically punt that game away and and really put his his egg in 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 all his eggs in this basket against FC Dallas in this one after losing three one against DC. Yeah, this better be be a win, or else it could re really get very interesting and things could get a little bit tense for for this team because i also look look at uh the schedule that minnesota has for the rest of the season and let's just say they still have some very tough game game com coming up in these next couple of weeks but in terms of the last five head to head matchup it was a 1-1 draw between both of these teams before minnesota winning one nothing against fc dallas then minnesota winning three nothing against fc dallas before uh the loons win three two against dallas and then dallas did win three one against minnesota but overall the loons have a very good record against dallas and you know i hoping being that you know that would continue in this in this game although one thing that the loons have not done very well this season is win on the road and i just feel like now they need to maybe at least win one or two two more road game to really solidify themselves into to the playoffs especially the fact that even with some of the home games that they they have remaining some of those games at home is still going to be relatively tough and i'm just worried they might drop point points in turn terms of the, those home games so yeah that's why i feel like they need to win maybe one or two road game and this is probably the the, the maybe the most easiest one that they're going to win on the road and especially the one that they have to win knowing what i just said with the way that with how the loons play against dc and look like they just kind of punt this game away there's just no excuse the fact that this they don't walk away with all three points and they could be in a tough position if they don't do so but now moving on into the last game on this board well you want a true playoff six pointer this is the one uh this is the game between the vancouver whitecaps versus the san san jose earthquakes which this game of course will start at 10 p.m eastern 7 p.m pacific but the actual kickoff is 708 p.m local time and by the way uh just a disclaimer since this is a road game there is no chance that i am going to be in the stadium for this game so i know a lot of quakes fans are probably are mad mad at me for being at the stadium yesterday and obviously it was unsurprising that when i was at the stadium they lost that game and lose 3-1 against seattle at home but 
at least I, I guarantee you that I'm not going to attend this game. And in fact, I think this is also a good chance for me to, well, actually, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll talk about, about that a little bit, bit later in the review because I actually have a, a big announcement that I'm going to be, be making uh, in the review regarding the, the quakes. And it's going to be something related that I'm going to be going somewhere uh, in, in mid-October. But, you know, coming into this game, the good news is I'm not going to go to Vancouver to watch this game, which you're assuming maybe that means it should be a win for the Quakes because when I don't don't watch the Quakes at PayPal Park, they tend to, at times, get get wins. And they're playing against a team that they have had a good record uh, against in the last couple of of head-to-head -head meeting. I mean, well, actually, saying that, you know, they did get a nil-nil draw between both of these teams and they did lose last year 2-1 against the Quakes, but before that, they did win 3 nothing against the, the Whitecaps uh, before winning 4-3 against the Whitecaps, and that, of course, is is in the MLS's back tournament, and no doubt, one of the most memorable MLS's back tournament game, at least in the group state, that is, that that we remember from, from that tournament, and then, of course, the Quakes winning 3-1 against the Van Vancouver Whitecaps, so, yeah, you know, I... I and definitely fancy that the Quakes can bounce back after that tough loss that they have against Seattle. And by the way, the Whitecaps, of course, true nil-nil against Houston on the road. And, you know, they I, I thought in that game they didn't really quite look that good. And they kind of got, got lucky that maybe they got a point out of that game. But, yeah, we shall see com coming into to this one to see how things is, is going to go. And that, again, I, I'm hoping that the Quakes do get all three points into to this game so that they they can potentially get themselves inching closer in terms of getting above the right line right now but either way hope you guys enjoy this video if you do make sure you guys leave a like smash that subscribe button let me know in the comments below what do you think of all six of these game and like i said uh, on saturday i will be doing the the preview of the the seven games i'm also hoping i'll, I'll do the review of all the all six of these game right after after when all the Saturday game action have concluded. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, make sure you guys leave a like, smash the subscribe button. And yeah, I of course will see you guys next time.